Brother Kassim. All right, Brother. Uh, some of you know me, some of you don't. Uh, I don't have a whole lot to say. I never really do. Uh, I'd like to thank the sisters for cooking. Because the brothers can't. <laughs>
what we don't understand in terms of our experience as black people, we have a measure of trauma and pain that's unique to us. Yes. We've right. been through some things that uh, historically and still going through some things and we'll go through some things going forward well. that uh, are unique to our struggle mm -hmm. as, a, as a people. So one of the things that, that came out of that uh, those focus groups is a need for those things to be addressed. So we've already uh, put together a, a program, it's called the uh, Emotional Emancipation Circles, and we're already uh, developing that and we're training people, we're actually training people throughout, that's going to take though, that concept throughout the community as a way to bring about healing and growth, that we have to create a safe space for people to come together and to talk about and process and have a curriculum for addressing what I call uh, black black pain and black healing. Mm. So when you look at the issues, they're they're not you know it doesn't take really an Einstein. We we need economic power. Uh, we need uh, to collectively come together and pull our, pool our resources uh, to buy. Uh, to buy land, to buy property. Yes. Uh, and the only way that uh, we can prevent anybody else to buy it is to buy it first. And the kind of things that we have agreed upon, uh, and if, if, you would, if, if you agree with it also, uh, you can indicate, as I tell you about it, you can say, Ashe, if you agree with it also. One of the things we have agreed on is that uh, we're not taking any outside money. Set that as an agreement. We believe that uh, we got to fund what we do. We got to fund it ourselves, and we believe that if we don't do that, then it becomes a struggle to be able to uh, have a free voice, so to speak, uh, to speak on things that uh, somebody may not necessarily like. If if I'm if I'm giving you, uh, then it is challenging. It's not it's not impossible. There are people who are doing it. There's people that have been able to. To balance that, but we believe that it's important to set as an agenda for us that we've got to be self-sufficient, we've got to be self-supporting, we've got to pool whatever we have to do whatever it is that uh, that we need to do. So, uh, in the way of education, in the way of the children, in the way of economics, in the way of uh, political involvement and political education. These are all the kinds of things that we want to begin to roll out in regards to programs uh, to the community. And so, uh, to make a long story short, to identify an uh, agenda for, for us, for you, that your voice is involved in, and to collectively come together to work on that agenda in different committees, understanding that the more people you have, uh, that's working on uh, any agenda, the more you can get done. And also understanding that our unity has been fought for so long. Say it. I our say unity, it. Means it's, it, it's so deep that exactly. we actually, uh, without knowing it, we fight each other our own self. Not understanding level. that the, the, the fear that uh, people have of us as black people is us coming together around any, any identified agenda that we can come together on that puts fear in, in the, uh, the minds of people. And so uh, we've also identified that it was not going to be about one person. It's not going to be, that's why we're all up here. Yeah, yeah. It's not going to be not one person standing up front, I'm the one, I'm the target. No. Well. Uh, if they're going to get at us, they might have to get at all of us. Hey. We are, we are, we are shared, we are all co-chairs. We recognize each other's strength. Yeah. We're not we're not uh, bothered by any shine that anyone gets. Somebody gets shine, get them, let them shine. Let them shine. You, know, you, you want to give shine to, let them shine. We're not bothered by that yes, because sir. we know behind the scene we're all working together. Yes, that sir. Sense to you? So that's a little bit that I can say about that. That'll be all right. Okay. <laughs>
but we would love to have either one of y'all come up. All right now. All right, everybody, give it up for Shamari. Good evening, good evening. How y'all doing? All right, all right. Good, good. It's a blessing to be here. I see some family. I see some friends in the room. This is a beautiful thing. We need to do this more often. Ashe? Ashe! Ashe! Somebody said that. That's alright. That's alright. Um, share a piece of drive. Before I do, I want to let you know uh, Monday at 6 p.m. at North Free Clinic, 5620 Ames, we're having a community reading feed. So all my readers, all my readers, you know, readers are leaders. So we're encouraging all of our readers on Nia, Purpose, Monday, Noah Free Clinic, 5620 Ames Avenue, all right? All right. So this first piece is called Hood, H-O-O-D, Hood, okay. I'm moving bricks, building pyramids. I'm chronically telling it how it is. I'ma claim my hood high off of determination. I'm no good with these conversations. Here's my statement. I'm sipping lean the back with some H2O. Envisioning my people blessed around the globe. Maneuvering around these haters trying to stop my glow. Stopping frisk, it ain't no stopping show. I'm on the go. Great men fall too, that's a law too. You be hard pressed not to let gravity be fall. Walls fall too, history taught you. Guess you wasn't paying attention to your mentions, claiming you offensive and you pretensive. And you don't build schools, you build prisons. And we add odds, cause you division. And you got clout, cause you be simping all. Oh, oh, uh, oh. Cause you be sipping on, oh, 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 The new topic of conversation is the manifestation of Satan. It's a six foot nine black man, and he lurking in your neighborhood. Sight? But I bet the message clearly understood. Birthrights to get painted as some common criminal. All lives don't matter, them crimes be minimal. Meanwhile, the turnstile at the courthouse spinning like Mary go. And there he go, there he go again. Another one of them black men face to face with the system. Hung out on a limb, it's succeeding epidemic. Jail cells don't reach their limit. Hold with facts, no skimming. Handle this lemons, then took the seeds away. No more sipping lemonade. Inmate to eliminate. Let me demonstrate. Black child in a womb, can you even picture that? Growing stronger every day, full term on track. But still born with complications. The complexion of his skin, rich in melanin, that make him akin to a target. We just getting started. Cause you know how they labeled him retarded. Now he good and medicated, he easily frustrated from attention degradation and now the school running out of patience. No rinse and repeat. Now he is 18, frequenting the streets, a new freak each week. Same hood, a new beef, in need of release. Triggers gon' get squeezed, trapped inside a box with no ability to leave. Cause we all in need of guidance, of guidance. And I pray we can find our way, our way. I just pray we can find our way. All right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I have a member of a band called Wakanda One. Right, We've man. been formed since 2015 before the movie. Mm. But one thing I do want you to know is that 2020 
The vision is becoming much clearer, so y'all look out for Wakanda One and some of the things we have to share with our community, locally, internationally. Happy Ujima, everyone. Thank you. Themselves to get you guys acquainted with them, All right, and then we will end things with um, 
brother Terry Muhammad, and then we shall eat. Y'all ready? All right. Yes. All right. So, Terrell McKinney. Terrell. Yeah. Woo! 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 How y'all doing? Again, my name is Terrell McKinney. I run it for the Nebraska State Legislature here in District 11, which is primarily North Omaha. I'm running because waiting, waiting my turn was not an option. I'm also running because what more experience do I need as a black man to, to be qualified to address our issues in our community? We need more leaders that are going to be unapologetic about addressing our issues and not being afraid, not going to take the money, not going to sit silent. We need more people like us in the room yes. to sit at the table. My agenda is unapologetically black because we've been unapologetically oppressed, discriminated against, killed, murdered, and enslaved. As a kid, man, um, we lived in a project. And one night, our project got raided. This wasn't the first one, first raid I, I've been through in my life, but this one always stuck with me because of the way the the police treated my mom. They treated her like she was nothing. And uh, all I could do was just sit there and scream and watch my mom cry. And it, it, it's always stuck to me, so it led me to always want to be better and do more to never let my mom down, because I would never want to see her cry again. I went to school, I got a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, and I'm in law school. But at the end of the day, I'm still black in America. I've always made it a point to embrace who I am and embrace who we are because I'm never going to let somebody tell me I'm less than. I'm not inferior to nobody. And I, and I want all these young black boys and girls to remember that, that they are great. We are all great. When I talk about criminal justice, it's not just about ending cash bail, addressing sentencing discrepancies, and ending mass incarceration. We must also talk about police accountability. Because if y'all didn't know, the police is still brutalizing our people and, and doing a lot of things that they shouldn't get away with here in Omaha. It's not just around the country, but nobody's talking about it. We gotta hold them accountable. Our prison system right now is currently in a crisis. Uh, overpopulated, it's one of the highest in the country and in the world. They don't have programming to allow people to get out. People are living in conditions that nobody should have to live in. This is America. We uh, we talk about other countries that do this to people, but we're not addressing it here with ourselves. Growing up, we had a saying, you make it to 25, you're going to be an OG. Sadly, a lot of my friends and family didn't make it to 25. I lost my best friend in 2013. He was only 22. He got killed in a party. And it's, it hurt me to lose him because he was one of the only people I really talked to about a lot of stuff that I was going through. But too many families in our community are dealing with a lot of stuff and it's not being addressed because they lack the resources. Instead of addressing all these social issues, we've got to start addressing the economic issues in our community. Yes, sir. North Omaha looks like North Omaha was when I was born in my eyes. And it's really gotten worse. Buildings are being torn down. Houses getting torn down. More black people are leaving this city because of lack of opportunity. And it's sad. We gotta make changes economically. We need economic equity and opportunity for all our people. North Omaha cannot be left on the island if we, if we wanna be here and have a sustainable life. Um, during my freshman year, so after high school, I ended up going to UNO. During my freshman year, I realized how stupid I was. I realized that I really didn't learn nothing in high school. What I'm talking about, I didn't learn how to budget my refund check. I didn't learn how to study. I didn't know how to write papers. I didn't know any of that. Luckily, I was on a wrestling team and we had tutors. If we didn't have tutors, I would fail. But it's a lot of people failing because they're not being properly educated and prepared to succeed after high school. That's a problem. No, it's not just on the teachers. No, it's not. But the educational system cannot continue to fail, fail our kids. It starts at home. Yes, it does. But we also got to make sure that our kids are going into these environments and they're being educated properly. Okay. They need smaller class sizes. They need more resources. Yes, sir. 
And it's honestly time to derail the, the school to prison pipeline. It's too many kids in the state. Our kids get suspended more than anybody, but nobody's taking the time to sit down and ask our kids what happened last night. All right, now. And that's the problem. They want to feed them with medication and things like that instead of addressing the issues. That's right. I know some of y'all might frown, frown on me, but I know our community got a bunch of soul food restaurants, but we also lack a, any healthy alternatives. We just see a bunch of soul food, a bunch of greasy food. That's a problem because it's killing us. Yes, it is. I'm being here. It's all good. We're watching our grandparents grow old and they're dying faster because of the food we're eating. And nobody wants to say it. But we also must address, like Larry said earlier, earlier, the mental health and the, and the trauma that a lot of us go through. Because even dealing with my best friend, it was something I had to deal with on my own in my college dorm. Nobody came to talk to me. I was, on, I, was, I was wrestling. Everybody said, hey, we support you, but nobody was really sitting there talking to me. There's a lot of people dealing with these problems every day and nobody's talking to them. Because we all dealing with them, so it's hard for us to take a step back and listen to our people. But we all must collectively collectively support and vote for candidates like myself. Yes, sir. Yes, because sir. we gotta take yes, sir. But we must also take take the responsibility to hold me accountable. Yes, if I sir. mess up, come tell me. Yes. Keep it real with me. Thank I can you. take construct, constructive criticism. I'm not afraid to sit in the room and y'all ask me a thousand questions. That's what I'm here for. Currently, Senator Chambers holds this seat, but I'm not Senator Chambers, I'm Terrell McKinney. All right, now. And it's my mission to continue to fight for this community and build on the foundation that he has set for, set, set for me. But to run a successful campaign, I need all y'all support. I need y'all to vote for me. I need y'all to donate to my campaign. I can't do this alone, and I won't be in Lincoln alone. Because I'm, I'm going to take y'all with me. All right. Find ways to get our people in Lincoln. You can visit my website, peopleforterrellmckinney.com. Follow me on Facebook, Terrell McKinney, LD11. And lastly, in the, in the words of Brother Malcolm X, if we don't cast a ballot, it's going to end up in a situation where we're going to have to cast a bullet. It's either the ballot or the bullet. Thank you. All power to the people. Just real quick before we bring up our other speaker, Zakai is here in the room, and I just wanted to present him with his award real quick. Sorry.
I, I look at the crowd and I see a lot of black, beautiful people. And I think about the struggles that we went through as a people. I was, I was born on 24th Street, Logan Fontenelle Projects, brought home from St. Joe's Hospital, right to Logan Fontenelle. Uh, my mom, she was a nurse at St. Joe's Hospital for 30 years. So I know about the commitment and dedication when it comes to helping the people. My address was 1563 North 24th Street. She told me to remember my address because if anything happened to you, the people need to know where to bring you. <laughs> I remember the days my window was facing Valley High. I would walk down an easy drive and I would get a lot of the candy and I would talk to the people. And I seen a lot of the issues that our people were facing. And I wanted to do something about it when I was young, but I was too young to do anything about it. So I sat back and thought, process my thoughts. That's important. We talk about mental health, we talk about the disparities that's facing our community, and they're real. So I looked at my mother, I looked at my father, and I said, dang, how can I live up to their expectations? My mother, she was one of the first resident commissioners for Douglas County Housing Authority before it split from Omaha Housing Authority. And I don't know if you guys know the history about Omaha Housing Authority. Omaha Housing Authority was more the maintenance side, and Douglas County uh, Housing was more the administrative side. My mom was one of the seven women to sue the federal government to reformulate Section 8. All right now. And, uh, and, hey, and which created the Portability Act, which allows the housing choice voucher. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. She, uh, she, she knew that individuals shouldn't be only allowed to live in the projects. And she wanted to be, she wanted better for the people. So she took that initiative to sue the federal government with the other seven women right. to represent. That started right here in Omaha, Nebraska. All right, now. I believe that gave me the inspiration to be one of the commissioners for Omaha Housing Authority for the last three and a half years. Right, and I was instrumental with addressing a lot of the disparities within our community. Thank you, Mental health, lack of financial literacy, conflict resolution skills. Those are the three fundamental issues that's facing in this community today. So I took it on myself to convince the other board members to implement policies and procedures to work with community connectors or community partners to make these issues uh, be addressed the appropriate way. One of the things that I did as a commissioner of Omaha Housing Authority is that I changed the criteria for housing, which allowed individuals that had felony convictions, gun violent convictions, to get housing vouchers after two years after conviction, versus six years after being incarcerated and have to wait another six years. I wanted to limit that because I understood that that contributed to couch surfing and recidivism. I got, feet, I got resistance from my fellow commissioners because they said, hey, Steve, you know, we're not contributing to recidivism. And I was like, I'm like, yes, we are. Because individuals that couch surf, they go right back to the similar environment that they left before they was incarcerated. All right now. All and right so now. I wanted to make that change so individuals have that hope or that inspiration to get into the homeownership program to become homeowners. Yes. And so that they can be, see value within each other. Yes. I think that's one of the things that we, we don't see in each other is value. Well, so now it's time to implement that and put it back in reality. Yes, it thoughts. is. Thoughts. Our thoughts. One of the other things I did as a community health worker at Charles Drew Health Center, of working with the public housing department, is that I went in and went door to door, four by four, individually talking to individuals about the disparities that they face. It gave me a unique position to not only address the physical disparities that individuals encounter with mental health, um, but also housing disparities. I took that initiative personally because I've been through that lifestyle. Like I said, I lived in Logan Fontenelle Projects. I also lived in Stratford Square. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Stratford Square or where that's located, but that's located in South Omaha. So I had to give I had a unique perspective to say, hey, I know the disparities of North and South Omaha. All right now. 
I mentioned before that there's some processes that's taking place with the Spencer development and the South Terrace development. Yeah. I wanted to make sure that the individuals had the first choice and the first opportunity to not only take advantage of the home ownership programs that's going to be implemented with this process, but also the business opportunities for small business owners. As you know, there's going to be a lot of changes in the future, but I have implemented processes to make sure African Americans take advantage of this. Now, I cannot force individuals to do such things. It's, you have to take the initiative on yourself and empower and think and empower yourselves to get into the trades. Be part of the development process of the building of these structures. I implemented that process so that the residents will have the opportunity to take part in the development of their own of their own property. Yes, sir. And that includes home ownership. <laughs> I also understand the educational side. I worked at Saratoga Elementary for five years, uh, pre-K to sixth grade. And there was a lot of issues that was facing Saratoga Elementary. Um, you know, it's one of the schools that doesn't get a lot of funding, just, you know, typical of Omaha Public Schools. I was able to find that school bonds was tied into property taxes. And then we see the disparity in our housing. So I wanted to bring home ownership back. So I allowed 3,000 vouchers from the Omaha Housing Authority to be released. No one has ever done that before. So that individuals can be successful in the home ownership program. a council member of the Early Learning Center for Policies and Procedures. And I was able to convince the first, uh, fellow council members to empower daycares, the local daycares, because there was a great fear. I had a great fear. I expressed this to the council that this group was coming in, taking business from black independent daycare owners. Yes, they did. <laughs> and so we created a process where we put $15 million into a, a, a pot and then said, hey, listen, not only are we going to pay you $450 to take this 10-week course to be certified to be a learning center, but we're also going to credential you to be in code with the Head Start. So this will give the local daycares the opportunity to become uh, learning centers and empower them and promote better business within our community. This is what I mean by sitting at the table and, express, and being that voice. Because if I wasn't there, guess what? They probably would have did whatever they wanted. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Goes to my next, my next announcement. Uh, standing here on sacred ground, I'm Malcolm X, great ancestors. Yes, sir. ancestors. Yes, sir. You know, I think about Huey P. Newton. Um, I think about my own mother that was part of the Black Panther Party here in Omaha, Nebraska. Yes. And I, I think about her because she always taught me about commitment. One of my other great ancestors, Judge Elizabeth Pitt, Davis Pittman, mm -hmm. she was instrumental as being the first African American to graduate from the law school of Creighton University. Yes, she was. And also the first African American judge in the state of Nebraska. Yes, and I take honor in that part right there. Woo! Woo! So, like I said, to announce that I will be running for City Council District 2 against Big Gray. Yeah. Because I feel, I feel that there is a necessary change that needs to take place within our community. I see the, the gang violence. I, like I said, I grew up in Logan Fondell, so I, I know about the issues. I was born in the projects. I was born in the disparities that I'm talking about. So to have that unique position and that understanding, I feel that I will be able to not only work with community partners to bring in lived, people with lived experiences like yourselves, like myself, to sit at the table, be that voice, be on the committees, be on the councils, be on the boards, so we can take our community back. We got to take our community back. Ain't nobody going to come and save us. We got to take our community back. So uh, yes, with that being said, uh, the Black Agenda Alliance 
is that avenue, it is that key, it is that way so that we can be self-sufficient and to really, really strengthen ourselves because not only one to do it, we can only be as strong as our community and we are a community. We're looking at each other and we're saying, let us be powerful. So I challenge everyone in here, hey, get on the committee, get on the board, get on the council so that we can get in, get our voice at the table so we can implement the right processes so we can see a better, stronger North Omaha. And with that being said, peace. Get up on their feet real quick and stretch out a little bit, wiggle around a little bit. I wish I could. Do we got some music? Part of the African Heritage is dance. We ain't had no dances today. We had a few groups uh, that weren't able to make it today that we were hoping to get here um, to give y'all some entertainment, liven up the spirit a little bit in here. Um, are we able to play some music real quick? Are we? What? No? <laughs> you wanna dance? She wanna let she wanna dance, let her dance. Come on, do a beat. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna have brother and sister come entertain us for two minutes, two seconds real quick. Come on, come on.
piece of paradise of our ancestors. Christ found a lake. That's not foreign to our fears originally. Because those were the same readings that that one that we all got faith in and believed in spoke when he addressed and he came in the presence of any other people that he was talking to. And that one that we know is as Jesus, the Christ. All right now. Whenever he came, that's how he did it. I want to kind of take a minute for what I'm going to say. It's to get you, first let me tell you, I am absolutely petrified. Because I know who I'm talking to. I know I don't want to just get up here just for your ears or whatever. I want to get up here as one that can, as a, that's been a servant since I started to come to life and understand it and appreciate what was given to me as a child. When I say a child, at the age somewhere around 25, 26 years old. <laughs> When I understand myself, understanding just the value of myself. Uh, my brother Johnny knows good. He's still here. He said something here one day that got my attention. You know what I mean? Because all the time we think people that stand outside of us is our enemy. He broke the word down, the inner me. And since I heard that, I had to understand about it, but I never just heard it according to how he put it. He said the inner me, it's the one that I got to deal with, the one that I have to battle with, one I have to get up in the morning and look at, the one that I have to make a change every day in a process to where I could be one that you can live with. Let me give you a quick, because you really don't know me if you didn't, you were in that environment. My brother said that he had, he could look out his window and look at Valley Hot. Is that what you said? Uh, Nothing that I brag about, but I understood who was standing in front of Valley High. I knew what was going on in front of Valley High. Night and day, 24-7, you know what I mean? And I just happened to be part of that lifestyle that was standing in front of Valley High. I used to rob people. I used to kick people doors in. I used to pull pistols on people. I was an intravenous drug user. I took what they call cough syrup, they call it lean today. I don't know what they call the pills, but I used to do the nod and also. Okay, I, I, I mean, I was just a, 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 a perfect enemy of the inner me. You know, so it didn't, it didn't sit well with me because I had a mother that, she was a praying mother that didn't have a I didn't have a father. I knew him. But he was not a provider. He needed to take care of the five children that he brought to the plant. But I had a mother. See, I'm at this age. I'm, I'm, I'm like a dinosaur to the most of y'all. <laughs> but some of us that study history will understand what I'm saying. I had a mother in order to provide and bring us up out of the condition that we was in. She wore white people clothes. Okay, she cleaned their toilets. She ironed their shirts. You know, so she she, she that's what she was a do domestic housekeeper. And this was in the South. I think her salary probably was five dollars a day. And she had five children. She taught me morals. She taught me how to say yes, sir, yes, ma'am. She taught me when I went through the neighborhood, you know, and how to carry myself, you know. But like most of my young brothers and sisters in here, when they leave our house, they are confronted with other environments. And I was confronted with other environments. But don't nobody want to be uh, scared. Don't nobody not want to participate. You want to have friends. You know, I mean, you want to associate. But all the time, you didn't associate in good behavior. Okay, so I went from there and got exposed to what is called black exportation movies. Anybody know what those are? Yeah, Black Metal Jones. Yeah, they, yeah, they still they still doing it today. You know what I mean? They just they just disguising it. You know what I mean? In, in movies like Colors. You, you know what I mean? And, and uh, those movies that they put those brothers in that's got talent, but they put them in those. Those uh, they depict them in ways to where that's what you think is what's going on and what's happening. 
So I said all of that to say this. But until one came and started cultivating me, and he gave me respect and understanding. And the greatest understanding that he gave me was I was not a good friend of females, sisters, okay? I went to really because I didn't work. I did not work. I mean, I'm not bragging, I'm telling you, I mean, because I'm, I'm really trying to make up for what I've done. I didn't work until after I became 28 years old, 29 years old. My lifestyle was a predator lifestyle. Okay? I stole, I robbed, I lived off the streets, you know what I mean? And that was popular because, you know what I mean, how you get your game over, you know what I mean? It's not to go to jail and get caught. And then if you do go to jail, they, they uh, cultivate you in jailhouse knowledge. And my brother kind of mentioned that. And then when you come out, they, you don't come out here as a citizen to do good. You come out to continue to be a predator. And let me say this, sister, the, the biggest predator that black men in the street prey on is female. I hope y'all feel me. And I, 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 I want to say this because in all reality, I'm not going to be long because I'm, like I said, I'm scared to death for the certain things I have to put out here. You know what I mean? Because our community is still geared that way. You know, and I want to put this out there so that we can deal with this realistically. The most of Elijah Muhammad taught that heaven lies at the feet of a woman. All right now. That a nation or a people can rise no higher than its woman. Well. And then if that's the case, and heaven lies at the feet of the woman, and when we are birthed into this world, we come through the canal of a woman. And when they got it fixed up now, that that comes through the canal and the woman ends up at the foot of the woman. The problem with that is, is that those that's bringing us in that our children see first don't look like us. Oh. And whether or not you believe it or not, that child, as you were bringing that child and it was being formed in your womb, it also had intelligence while it was in the womb. So everything that was in the environment while you was bringing it forth also was being written. Well, people say, well, he came here knowing nothing, but he came here in an environment that had been put before him or her to act and respond accordingly. So almost like Elijah Muhammad said, the nature of a thing is determined by how it comes into existence. Wow. And the Bible says you are born where? In sin. And shake in the day. I believe it. So we were dumped in a slave-like mentality from a slave master. And we took his mind on. And we function and we act according to how his mind is. So all of us right here, right now, have been bred into being what is called a white supremacist. Well, help us, Lord. Oh, no, I'm not. I look in the mirror. No, when you look in the mirror, you see a melanin skin color. But you are not functioning from a melanin skin color that's independent of the mentality of the white man that cultivates. I got to say this, you know what I mean, because it, it, it's real. And the only way we're going to get out of this, brothers, the only way that we're going to get out of this, we got to come to a clear understanding of who the female is that then let you unto her. She's our most valuable product. You say we just went through a, a what's the date? 28, three days ago, they just put one of the greatest performers on earth on. And they lied and they stole, they robbed about this man Jesus. They said that was his birthday. Because we still caught into repetitive things. And that's how they taught us over the years. And we just keep on going back and forth with this crazy mentality and we won't let it go. You know what I mean? 
So if you've got a Christmas tree in your house, go read Jeremiah 10 and 1. <laughs> That's true. It's in All right. Yeah. Jeremiah. I don't know what they were celebrating at the time. I really do. But how could they be celebrating great the birth of Jesus and Jeremiah was a prophet that was 500 years before the birth of Jesus? They go not the way of the heathen, it's just paraphrase. But the heathen is the one that goes into the woods where the workman is at and chops down a tree. Take it and fasten it to the floor so that it can't move. Now they got a song like this here. Then it says, deck it with what? Gold and silver. Be not amazed at it or afraid of it because it can do you no harm. But these are heathen mystic practices. So we say to our children, after they knocked the tree down, who did it? And they all sit down. Who did it? Well, I know you did. Girl, I know you did. They look. Did you do it? No, I didn't do it. Did you do it? No, I didn't do it. But they did something that you didn't realize that you had taught them to do, but now you want to beat the hell out of them because they did. And that's why. You lied to them. Now you want somebody that you lied to about an event to tell you the truth is you're going to lose your own. Right. Think about it. The most of Elijah Muhammad said that the brain was created to move or to receive truth. That we function and operate on truth. Jesus said that truth will do what? Set you free. But if I'm if I'm being lied to and I'm accepting the lie, I absolutely is killing the very brain cell that'll give me up out the condition that I'm in. So we have to feed on truth. We stop looking at each other as enemies. Now I want to come to, to, to something and I'm gone. Okay. Uh, yeah. Our women have to start cultivating or being cultivated. Brothers, we have to support them in cultivation and we cultivating ourselves. Take on the responsibility that's been given us. We're producing children that we're not taking care of. Well, we let other men come in the houses where our door is at. Because she feels that she has a need and a desire to be fed and, and, and utilized because she is one that needs love and compassion. Is that just her nature? When I was in the world and I used to go on these different uh, 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 nights, although there was one, I'm going to just tell you the truth, I'm going to tell you the truth. There was one night stand, but in my, whenever I left, I can look and I can see in her, that's not really what she wanted to do. She just wanted to be consoled. She just wanted to be whole. She just wanted to be needed. And she just wanted to be loved. And she, in her cultivation in this world, she was expecting something that I was doing. So I put, I become, and I'm on this journey. And that's why when I look around the room and I see the and I, I see uh, uh, the sign. Yes. When I see him, look, I'm, 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 I'm that one that's ready to pass the time. I ain't not ready to die. Okay? You know what I mean? But I love when I look up and I see these brothers. I met these brothers some yes. years ago. Okay? And they're still fighting and struggling. And people want to judge them. You can't judge them because guess what? Anything that's dead is not dead, is not in motion. Well, they are in motion, although they're struggling to find themselves. Yes. You know, not what they're struggling against. They're struggling with a system that's set up and that can conquer the world. We ain't talking, you know, this white man in America that conquered the world. Okay? Just think about somebody that wants to stand up and go against the grain of this system, you know what I mean, and fight for what you need to be done and become perfect examples of, of, of what a male should be. Thank you, Lord. So I have to give this doctor praise to the Almighty like Muhammad on the floor park. Because in between those two, we got Malcolm. Okay? Malcolm was a perfect husband. Okay? Malcolm was a moral man. 
God can love his people. You know what I mean? So I read the ballad of the You understand? You got me 15 years old, on drugs, sitting down, swabbing, get up, look at it, read my rooms, the bullet the ballad of the book. At Technical High School. The reason why they closed it down, I can't get into it right now. You know what I mean? The giants came out of Technical High School. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. I can go to other schools right now. I'm just gonna tell you about how, that's where I went. That's what guess what? I actually graduated. <laughs> I actually graduated. I started on drugs at 13 years old. Well. So when they started doing this, this is nothing new, brothers and sisters. Smoking the bud. Uh, the best, the best Hennessy, Cabasier. Yeah, it's just dark. I just like dark women, so I guess I'm not to be dark. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. I came here because. I love you. I engaged the, at this point the majority of my life trying to recultivate myself so that I can be an example for the young brothers and sisters that I, I, I come in contact with. So we brothers got a responsibility. Go study, sisters. Mary, the mother of Jesus. If it's not too hard for you, to take in concept what she went to because they say she was that Jesus was what the immaculate conception. Stop it and listen to the verbiage. Jesus was the immaculate conception. No, the immaculate conceived. Y'all got it? Is y'all rolling with me? Yeah. Come on, I just need to know she's rolling with me. So the Immaculate Conceived she brought to the planet was that one that had it was cultivated. People started saying that he was the what? Son of what? God. That's what each and every one of you sisters that can produce is a God. God is we got to God. stop producing killers. We got to stop producing liars. We got to stop all this stuff. And, and our very existence, our very condition comes through your womb. So you need to know and understand just how important you need. May Allah continue to bless you, guide you, Thank you. protect you, heal you with the life of understanding the Stand by our side, brothers. Thank you. I just need a hand and then I'll count how many plates we need to make and we'll bring your plates up to you. 